Welcome back. Well, the rising cost of living has inspired an urban farming revolution. This sustainable and cost-effective idea is turning underutilised concrete jungles into thriving green spaces. Rooftops, car parks, schools and family backyards are being reimagined and also transformed. And edible gardens are popping up to produce bumper crops all year long, taking the pressure of shrinking budgets. To tell us more, we're joined this morning by Brendan Condon from Australia Ecosystems. Brendan, good morning. Let's get straight into it. What do we need to do to create a backyard urban farm? It's really simple. Well, it is. So if you've got access to some nice soil, then it's just a weekend workshop where you can dig that up and turn that into windrows and mulch it. Uh, get plants from your local uh, nursery and plant and you're up and away. But if you've got a small backyard and we have shrinking backyards or in an apartment, then you can look at paved surfaces and you can use containerized food growing. So um, we've got new modular clip together urban farming systems uh, that are coming online now and that can allow us to transform a rooftop or a backyard or a car space or a workplace um, or, or a school into a thriving farm have it installed, planted same day and producing food within weeks. Yeah, and that's the really exciting part because we used to think, as you said, we'd need that little backyard, a little front yard somewhere, but now rooftops, even in apartments on balconies, you can do this. Absolutely. So uh, we're, we're, we think that there's a terrific system called wicking beds. They're an Australian invention. They're bottom watering, self watering. Mm -hmm. You only need to water them once a week during summer, once a month during winter. And uh, you can clip them together and build them across any surface. Uh, we use the, the, the food cube, which is manufactured here in Melbourne. And we're seeing this big ups, uptick in demand for people in urban spaces to uh, be producing food within arm's length. And there's so many benefits in doing so. And you don't have to have a green thumb for this to work, do you? Not at all. So wicking bears are really simple. They're up off the ground. They're self-watering. Uh, they're soil based and it's, it's really hard to, uh, to, for them to go wrong. Uh, so they're, they're low tech and, and low maintenance and they can be nimbly installed into any sort of urban space. And then you can be up and growing up walls, uh, balconies, rooftops. If we look at our cities, Melbourne for instance is a million hectares and there's a lot of surplus space mm -hmm. right through the urban form where we could be farming. Oh, this is great. Now, while there may be sort of a bit of a higher upfront cost uh, than just going down the, the, uh, the shops, uh, the return is definitely worth it, right? Absolutely. So a clever urban farmer who learns their craft can be producing one to two hundred dollars a year per square metre of an urban farm. Uh, we find that even with the better, uh, higher, uh, higher performing um, wicking bed farms like the Food Cube, it's a two to three year payback. But you also have to look at the other paybacks. So there's exercise, there's good nutrition, you're reducing food miles to food meters, you're generating a surplus of food to give to your friends in your neighborhood, you're inviting nature into the city. So there's many, many benefits other than just the financial. Love it. Brenda, I find gardening really relaxing. It's also great for your mental health and you can actually see that you've achieved something. Mm. Absolutely, and there's a whole lot of research now linking uh, access to green space and even getting your hands in a healthy soil with uh, mental and physical health. Yeah. Uh, and it's a form of exercise, you don't need to go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> all right, just lifting all those fantastic uh, veggies out of the garden. Now, if we wanted to get started on this, so let's, you know, right now, we love, love what you're saying, we want to get going. What should we be planting now? So it just depends what climate zone you're in. So I think we're talking to a national audience. Um, so it'll be different in Darwin compared to the southern states. I would say Google your area and what should I be planting in winter? And you'll get a list of um, the local appropriate plant varieties. Here in Melbourne at the moment, it's, it's onions and garlic and cabbage, potatoes, uh, kale, all those sort of uh, green winter vegetables. And then in a couple of months time, you'll have a lot more range uh, as, as the day length warms up. And Brendan, what about green waste? Because that's a big issue. Yeah, it's a massive opportunity as well. So in Australia, we produce between four to seven million tonnes a year of green and food waste. That's coming resource, coming into our cities. It's got nutrients and minerals. If we could compost that locally, we could divert that to urban farming in all of these city spaces and we could turn our cities into thriving food producing hubs. Urban farming will never replace what our valuable farmers are producing. Uh, we need to support our farmers, but at the same mm -hmm. time it can supplement food supply. So that's just an absolute free kick is all this green waste that has been going to landfill. Yeah, and we all need to be thinking exactly this way. Uh, Brendan, great to talk to you this morning. Great stuff, thank you. Thanks for having me. Gardening is super relaxing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I watch people gardening and <laughs> I, it makes me relax. You don't your lawn. You'd be, do your edges, nothing? 
I don't, I don't, <laughs> well, I don't have... A, I, we live in an apartment. Do you? So there's less of a lawn thing. It's really relaxing. Yeah? No, I watch people and I feel very relaxed when I'm watching them. <laughs> That's your new thing for 2023. Yeah, I'm going to get a garden. Yeah. <laughs>